What's up guys? Today I have a special build tutorial on the mirror finish. Now the mirror finish isn't necessarily a specific build, but it's a technique that can be applied to basic coils all the way to some of the most intricate builds out there. However, even though it's a, it's a pretty simple technique, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of things involved, a lot of precautions, and so I thought it justified the full length of a build tutorial. The mirror finish is a technique that has been developed by a good friend of mine, Saab, and he goes by the name Brahmasutra underscore 68 on Instagram. I'll have a direct link to his Instagram page. Be sure to check it out. He does beautiful, beautiful coils and equally beautiful photography, so it's always a joy to check out his feed and, and see what he's up to. But what he has done is he's pulled some inspiration from previous works of Martin's 666 and Twisted Messes. And he's basically developed this technique in where you sand the outside surface of a coil in different phases. So you start with a, a lower grit sandpaper and you work your way all the way up to a super fine grit. And in between working your way up, you also are cleaning the coil as well, which is a huge, a huge deal to me. And so we'll, we'll go over that here in a little bit. But ultimately, when you get to the super fine stages of sanding it, you get this absolutely gorgeous mirror finish on the surface of the coil. So with the mirror finish, aside from its obvious aesthetic beauty, it does offer some performance benefits. In my short time working with this concept, the biggest one that sticks out to me is wicking. So in general, the coil wicks a little bit better. The cotton tends to stay cleaner a little bit longer and the coil overall doesn't gunk up as quickly. Now, of course, it's relative to the juice you're using. If you're using a juice that has a lot of sweetener in it or sucralose, it's gonna gunk up regardless. But I tend to use the same juice consistently and what I've noticed with using that is I get a little bit better wicking. And the other thing is with that surface having that polished finish, it acts a lot like ribbon wire. So some of the flavor notes are a little bit more crisp and so forth. But we'll go into that a little bit later. All right, so to complete this build, aside from the standard tools we always use like wire cutters and ohm meter and cotton, these are the tools to point out. We'll of course be using a drill and for this type of technique, I'll be using a corded drill. If you don't have a corded drill, there's no need to go rush out and buy one. I just tend to use the corded drill for this because it spins at a much faster RPM and makes this process a little bit quicker. You'll also need a pair of pliers and you'll need something to wrap the coil around. With this technique, you actually wrap the coil prior to sanding it. So you want to be able to have something that has enough shoulder on it that allows you to get a couple extra wraps because you'll be unwrapping part of the coil to get your leads in the end. So I'm using a drill bit. You can also purchase uh, stainless steel rods off of eBay. They're, they're dirt cheap if you prefer to go that route. Or you can use a micro screwdriver as well. The wire that I'll be using for this build is two types. So we're gonna do a basic one with 20 gauge anarchist wire and I'll kind of walk you through the process with that. And then we're also gonna be doing the same process with a more intricate wire. In this case, I have prepared some frame staple wires and it's composed of six pieces of 0.5, two pieces of 26, and it's all wrapped in 36 gauge. The sandpaper we'll be using today is 500 grit, 1000 grit, and 2000 grit. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm trying to keep it short. I'm only going up to 2000. However, if you want to achieve a really sharp looking coil and really get that polished look, I always go up to about 7,000. Sometimes I'll go up to 12,000. Uh, some guys are going up to 17,000. I mean, it, it gets a little ridiculous. However, once you get past 2000 grit, it's less sandpaper and it's more of a polished paper. And uh, so I will have some links in the video description as to where you can purchase some of these higher, higher, finer grit sandpapers. However, the sandpaper that I do have here, 
I purchased all of them locally at a automotive paint store. The most important tool in this whole process is the way in which you clean it. I will be using a ultrasonic cleaner with a soap and water mixture. However, if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, it's no big deal. You can use a high powered toothbrush that oscillates. Um, if you don't have either of those, I recommend getting them. Simple soap and water does not work. I actually use a toothbrush and the ultrasonic cleaner, but through this process, you're creating a lot of fine particles of metal and also the grit from the sandpaper. And if you do not clean this, I mean, I cannot stress this enough. If you do not clean this, this can be very harmful for you and to your lungs. So once again, get an ultrasonic cleaner or get a high powered oscillating toothbrush. So I've gone ahead and done some prep work. I went ahead and cut a couple different strips of the different grit sandpaper that I'll be using. I also went ahead and took my 20 gauge anarchist wire and cut two pieces and straightened them. And then I went ahead and put a hook on each end of the wire. And you wanna use whatever drill bit or rod you're using to, to aid in making that hook. And basically you just want it to hook around and come down a little bit. And this helps secure not only the wire, but the drill bit into the chuck of the drill. We'll go ahead and insert this into the drill. The drill I'm using has three jaws. So I position one jaw up top so it can clamp down on the top of the wire here. And I'll stick the drill bit in far enough to where the actual cutting part of the drill bit is concealed once you get it positioned where the drill bit is nice and secure and the wire is as well, you'll want to make sure that you go ahead and torque down on it pretty good. Pull on it to make sure it's on there. All right. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna coil this up. And one thing to consider is you want more wraps than your in desired amount of wraps. So if you want an end result of six wraps, I would recommend doing 10 wraps. Or just add four wraps to whatever you're wanting to do because you're gonna wanna take wraps off of each end to uh, give yourself some leads to install it into your atomizer. So you take your pliers and clamp down on one end and bring it around and then at the beginning just gently start wrapping it So I got 13 wraps on there and what happens is you can't always get this in to be flush. So I'll go ahead and cut it as close as I can to the coil. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to get that in down. So I use this little hammer and I'll uh, gently tap on it until I can get it flush. All right, now that we have our wire all coiled up, it's pretty much ready to go. We'll go ahead and we'll start with 500 grit and we'll take a couple strips and you just want to loop it around the coil and begin sanding it. A couple things to consider is when you're sanding this, you don't need to move up and down the coil. You just need to apply an even amount of pressure. And while you're doing this, the sandpaper, the coil, the screw or the dri uh, drill bit or screwdriver, it's all gonna get really hot. So if you lay into it for too long and you go to try to take this off, it will be hot. So keep that into consideration. And I always do about two to three strips of sandpaper and then I'll stop and start the cleaning process. 
Um, and then another thing to consider, this does make a lot of uh, debris and particles. So it's a dirty process. Your hands are going to get dirty. Uh, you know, some of the sandpaper advises you to use a respirator. Um, you can go ahead, I mean, you can use a respirator, you can use nylon gloves if you want. If you're doing a lot of sanding, especially when you get up to the super fine uh, grit sandpaper, then I would recommend using uh, some kind of, some kind of mouth protection. So before moving on to the thousand grit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove everything from the drill and we're gonna go ahead and clean this coil with the ultrasonic cleaner. And you'll wanna do this at each phase of this process. So I usually run it about, uh, about three to four cycles. Each cycle is about three to five minutes and all that's in there is a soap and water mixture. But I'll do it a couple times and then take it out let it dry and then go back to sanding it with a thousand grit and what's great about this is while you're cleaning this you can actually go ahead and start working on the second coil All right, so we just completed the 500 grit sandpaper and cleaning them, they're all dry. We're gonna go ahead, repeat this process, but now we're using 1000 grit. All right, so now that we've completed the simple coils, I'm just gonna quickly glance over this. I have a piece of frame staple wire, and because the outside of it is wrapped in 36 gauge, that 36 gauge is a pretty fine gauge of wire as it is, so there's not as much material there to take off or polish. So after we coil this up, instead of starting with 500 grit, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip all the way up to 2000. And just for the tutorial, I'm only going to do 2000. I'm going to do a couple passes and a couple cleanings. But at the end, you'll be able to see just what 2000 does. But you know, you can take that up to 3000, then take it up to 5000, then 7000, then 12000, and so forth until you get that desired finish that you're looking for.
that's good anyways. So we just finished polishing and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna unwrap a couple of these coils so we can generate our leads and, and kind of shape the coil a little bit. One thing to consider is while you're doing this and while you're actually mounting it into your atomizer, you are gonna be getting fingerprints and smudges on the coil. So what I like to do is after I get it all mounted, before ever firing it, I'll go ahead and clean it one last time. I'll usually throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner for a few more cycles, or uh, I also like to take a traditional toothbrush and get in there and scrub it and try to get it as clean as I can. So. I'll just take a flat head and try to pry one end up while holding on the coil so it doesn't deform the coil shape. And then once I get it up away from the coils a little way, I'll come in and grab it. So that's the mirror finish technique slash build tutorial and as you can see it produces an absolutely stunning finish to any coil design be it a macro coil all the way to a super complex build frame staple what have you it's a really fun process I really enjoy doing this process to any design it's gonna kind of be hard to to not do this every single time but it's a lot of fun hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you get a new tool from this video. Definitely feel free to give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, once again, I cannot stress how important it is to thoroughly clean the coil, the wire, the builds through every phase, even up to after you mount it. So please use caution when you're doing this because I would hate for anyone to replicate this and not clean it and inhale a bunch of fine particles. So. I'll have a bunch of links in the video description to where you can purchase an ultrasonic cleaner, where you can purchase super fine grit, sandpaper, all of that. It'll all be in there. So thanks for watching. If you enjoy what you saw, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I have a bunch of new content coming out soon. And if you also have a little bit of time, head over to squiddo.com and check out my website. Thanks.